Speaker. Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District monthly meeting. It is June 10th, 2015. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. How are you? We have the. Mr. Tom McGurk here from the Zoning Board is going to give us some uh, insight of what we should be doing. What we should be doing. Or what we shouldn't be doing. Is that more like it? Uh, we shouldn't be. Oh, well, we should have left out all of that. <laughs> we need a building permit for this. So we it took us 15 years to figure out how to turn it around, thanks to somebody else. You know? well, very nice name. Well, thank you for inviting me to come down here and speak to you about the zoning board. Um, um, I guess there's been, not confusion, but every, there's been concern that we should know the process a little bit better. Some of the people may be a little bit confused by what the zoning board does or what would trigger somebody to go to the zoning board. I know Mr. John Kane knows that very, very well. <laughs> And so sometimes um, a project that seems to be cut and dry may trigger like something that makes you go to the zoning board. And especially on the beach, um, we have to worry about the different zones that we do have here. Uh, we have the BS zone and the RB zone, and those are the two zones that are very predominant down here at the beach. Uh, we also have the RCS zone, but we don't have too many properties in that zone, so we don't see that too often. Um, just to start off the, the process, anybody that's looking to do any uh, work on their property, the place to start would be the building department. You know, the uh, building department is accessible all the time. They do have a full-time secretary, so if you had any questions or if you needed to make an appointment, she can certainly set that up for you. And so um, where you would start would be uh, an application for a building permit. And, um, you know, quite honestly, because most of the residents of not only the town but also the beach, they're not professional builders, so it gets a little confusion, confusing what actually is needed. So what is always a good place to start would be to go into the building department and ask questions. And you can certainly set up an appointment with Kevin if you have very specific questions, if you're doing a big project, you know, like Chuck did, you know, the, the first place to start is with Kevin, so he can go through what you may need. And so, um, then uh, he would be able to tell you if you need any type of, of um, variance. You know, so in order to know if you need a variance, what you would need to, to do is know exactly what the zoning ordinances are. And those are online if you went to the uh, hamptonnh.gov and into the building um, menu bar, they do have all of the documentation and the current year zoning ordinances are online. They change every March, as we know. Um, little changes, sometimes big changes. We haven't had any real big changes on the beach area in a number of years, although there is discussion that we will be reviewing that in the next couple of years. Um, I thought it was this year, but I guess it will probably be next year, um, to, to see if we should be making the zones a little bit more applicable to the application on the beach because with the two different types of zones that we have in the precinct, the RB, which is multifamily, and the BS, which is business seasonal. You know, business seasonal allows for a number of different businesses, but it also allows for residents. Um, by, by zoning ordinances, we can have two residents in the BS zone plus a business without having to go to the zoning board as long as you meet all the other um, requirements, which is exactly what happened to John. He had three units, so the setbacks changed from four feet to 40 feet. So it uh, seems a little restrictive, 
and those are one of the things that I think the planning board was going to be looking at because we obviously have a lot of examples of more than two units in the business seasonal zone. Uh, the RV zone does not allow for any type of business and that zone is anything west of Ashworth not including the properties along Ashworth Avenue and anything in the island section but not including anything that is on Ocean Boulevard. So anything that's on Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth Avenue in it becomes a business seasonal zone. So they have more opportunity, I guess, in that zone to put businesses. They also have less restrictive setbacks. Unless you have a third unit, then we have more restrictive setbacks. So this is where the confusion, I think, sometimes comes in, <laughs> is like, if I hit this criteria, then the setback goes from four feet to 40 feet, and everybody's lot is 50 by 100, so it makes it very uh, difficult. So if you say, geez, I want to put three units on a property, almost anybody has to go to the zoning board. So one of the things that we have suggested is looking into the zoning, you know, and obviously I think that we need the precinct's help pushing for more applicable zoning. And... Um, you know, but that is done at the planning board level. The zoning board only adjudicates. We basically take whatever is in the zoning ordinances, and if you need to get a variance, then we look at um, your application and we basically grant the variance or deny the variance. But any time that zoning needs to be changed, that's done at the planning board level which is something that's a little confusing for a lot of people because they think that the zoning board actually writes the zoning ordinances, which we do not. So anybody that feels as if the zoning does not apply, uh, is not applicable to what actually happens on the beach, the people that talk to about that would be the planning board or the town planner. I've had conversations myself with the town planner, this current planner, and the previous planner, just to make sure that, you know, we can get something that's a little less restrictive. And I'm not saying that it would be a free-for-all, I'm just saying something that is more applicable to what we actually have at the beach. Because the, the way that it works now is almost anything has to go in front of the zoning board. If you want to put a shed on your property, you need to go to the zoning board. If you want to add some stairs, you need to <laughs> go to the zoning board. Um, so if Kevin, determines that you do need a variance, they're going to give you this application for a petition of relief for the zoning ordinances. And this can get a little confusing, um, but again, Kevin is available to help um, explain the application because some of the terminologies may be obvious to us who do this on a day-to-day -day basis, but not so obvious for the, the average homeowner. And so he's very good about going through the application with you. A lot of times, though, I do suggest that if it's something that is, is difficult and very important to you, that you uh, ask for the assistance of a, an attorney. For, for the simple reason that if you get denied at the zoning board level, there is no way for you to go back and ask for the same variance. Once you get denied once for a variance, you cannot go back on the same property and ask for the same variance again. And that goes for the length of the property, not just the length of the ownership of the property. So if you were selling your property to somebody and they wanted to ask for a variance on your behalf and they get denied, it's not the applicant who gets denied, but the property that gets denied. And that's something that a lot of people don't necessarily understand or know. Well, it was denied in 1987. When they come back and now, it's, it's, it's on record as absolutely not. Exactly. You know, um, some of the things, you know, if you were denied in 1987 and you want to put the same exact um, um, petition in for relief, there would have to be some sort of material change, either to the application, to the property, or to the zoning regulations. And so if they had changed one little part of the zoning re regulations that were applicable to whatever variance that you were seeking, then you have the opportunity to go back in front of the zoning board again. But if everything remains the same, then you don't have any opportunity to go back in front of the zoning board. Uh, there are five criteria that uh, anybody going in front of the zoning board must meet. 
that uh, granting the variance may um, would not be contrary to the public interest. You know, so that way, um, it's it's pretty cut and dry that um, the variance, if the, we deem the application to be contrary to what the town has determined to be their master plan, or um, or it, it uh, violates any type of safety or welfare of any of the citizens, we have the opportunity to deny the uh, petition. Um, by granting the variance, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed, basically saying that when the zoning ordinances were written, they're written basically in a bubble. And so every application is different, and we have to look at the application and say, when this zoning ordinance was written, was the spirit of the ordinance adhered to with this application? You know, because we, uh, for a, uh, you know, there's definitely, there are definitely different types of lots out there. There's one particular example of a, um, of a lot that the people wanted to preserve a tree that was in their yard. And the only way to do that was to push their house over by a couple of feet. The spirit of the ordinance basically is that yes, you can you know, move your house over a little bit in order to preserve some sort of natural, um, feature of your of your property or if on the uh, west side of Ashworth Avenue because Ashworth Avenue is at an angle a lot of those those um, lots are also at an angle so in order for you to have a square house and not a <laughs> house at an angle you know the spirit of the ordinance says that yes you may be able to move it just a little bit in order to get what you normally would get if your lot was square um, by granting the variance, uh, would substantial justice be, be given? Um, you know, again, I think that that example of the, the square house on the, on the crooked lot would be substantial justice, and that example would hold true as well. Um, would the variance diminish the value of surrounding properties? You know, this one, um, especially when we're at the beach, and there are some views that need to be maintained. If you were to say, I want to be building up to my property line, and by doing so, you would be encroaching on the view corridor for somebody in the back. I'm not saying that, that you have to preserve views for other people, but if the, if the setbacks were four feet on either, either side, for example, and you want to build to one foot in either side, there are three feet of what is potentially view corridor that somebody could, you know, claim as being their own because that is the zoning. And so they don't have the right to, to have you not build on your property, but you don't have the right to build too far over to block either wind or view or sunshine or, or anything like that. Tom, excuse yes. me, what about going up? Going up? Um, and it would block a view, say. You, everybody has the right to go up in the RB zone to 35 feet, and people have the right to go up in the BS zone to 50 foot tall. Um, once you get to that height, it's very difficult to determine if somebody's view is being blocked, say, on the sea spray, which went up to 64 feet tall. You really can't claim that somebody's view were blocked because the same view would have been blocked at 50 foot tall. You know, so that's what you have to determine. If we adhere to the zoning ordinances, would there be a change? If you were to go out to two feet on the property line, yes, there would be a change because at ground level, as you're standing, you wouldn't be able to see, you know, through. Mm -hmm. um, there have been obviously some examples where um, we have allowed people to either uh, build to the property line or build to the, the sidewalk. You know, that actually, and we had a determination on the board that north of the casino, historically, that's how that neighborhood was developed. South of the casino, they adhered to the four foot setback. And so that was something that there was a conversation, and quite honestly, there is court um, rulings that say if your neighborhood has developed in a certain manner you have the right to continue developing it in that manner 
you know, so like the island section or, or any of the uh, um, properties that are in the RB zone. The RB zone, and I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it says it's 15,000 square feet per unit. Does that sound right? 1,500, yeah, 1,500. No, no it's actually 15,000. Yeah, so basically saying that you can't even build one unit on your property the way that the zoning is written because we're either 50 by 100 or 40 by 80. So we made a an exception to the rule saying that you can build a single family <laughs> on, the, on the lot, but the zoning does not even apply to allowing you to build a single family on the lot. So when you go in and uh, there are good examples in the island section um, where three units have been placed on a 50 by 100 lot, a 0.11 acre lot. And um, because that neighborhood has developed in a manner that three units have been allowed, then three units seem to be the, the rule of thumb. And it's not that it's in the zoning ordinances, but by property rights or by legal standards, we cannot let somebody who is your neighbor do one thing and then say that you cannot do the same thing. Unless there are circumstances that that are out of the control of the board. You know, so but everything being equal, we cannot stop you from doing something that is congruent with what the neighborhood has already developed. Um, and then the last one is is the uh, would, would the granting of the variance um, result in an unnecessary hardship? Um, specific examples of that would be um, if a particular property is unbuildable by the standards of the zoning ordinances. And so I guess the example of the 40 by 80 lot that by zoning ordinances is deemed unbuildable but you can't deny somebody property rights. Um, so if they if they have the, if somebody in the RB zone could build a house and you have a lot that is undersized and you did not create that hardship for yourself, then you are allowed to to get a variance. But you cannot create a hardship for yourself and then go ask for a variance. So, what about? natural disaster or a fire or um, you have a porch, a wraparound porch on your property mm -hmm. 50 years. If, is, that, is that gone? If, it, if, it if you had a fire on your property? A fire. Uh, what, uh, if you have a fire on your property and it destroys your property or the a how porch. Much, a porch. If the house floated away <laughs> with the tide, um, you are allowed by right one year from whenever that disaster was to reclaim the use. So if you had three units on a property that only could support one unit, you have one year for the use to um, without going for a variance. But that doesn't mean that you have the right to build it to where it was. If it was encroaching on the, the town right away, then you have to pull it back and you have to adhere to the to the uh, zoning ordinances of today, but you're still allowed to put the three units on the property for one year. And after that year, you can ask for um, a variance for three units. So that becomes, you know, a tricky and misunderstood um, part of the zoning ordinances, especially with appraisals, you know, because a lot of times they'll say, if this were to be destroyed, can you rebuild it? because you know, that is definitely part of an appraisal process. And so as long as they know how to ask the correct question at the building department, they will get the proper answer. Sometimes they ask a, a question that leads to an improper answer. <laughs> you know, but yeah, you actually have to build to today's standards. So I just, I'm, I'm understanding that if there's a fire mm -hmm. and your foundation is on, a building's gone except for your foundation. Mm -hmm. yep. And your foundation is on the property lines. Mm -hmm. and Five years down the line, you haven't built yet. Can you go off that foundation? No. No, the foundation actually doesn't mean anything. It's like once you're making um, more than 50% improvements on the property, then you lose all grandfather rights. 
So what would the reason be for someone to leave their foundation on a property then? Um, they can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's nothing saying that as long as it meets all health and safety requirements, the town can't force you to take something down. It's only if it, you know, if something was an eyesore, you know, unfortunately in New Hampshire we, can, we allow it because it is property rights. They do pay taxes, and it may be the ugliest thing we've ever seen, but um, it does, they do have property rights, and their taste may be a little bit different than ours. Okay. Tom, I have, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, what is the minimum before uh, a building permit is even triggered? Is it a thousand dollars? I believe it's five hundred, but I double checked with the building department. The other thing is that um, wasn't there an ordinance a couple of years ago that we passed so that the building height on Ocean Boulevard in a certain area is eighty feet now? Mm -hmm. It is 80 feet uh, from 8th Street to F Street. And 70 Eight. feet of livable space. Le 70 feet okay. of livable Five space. More than 50, yeah. yeah. But once you get over 75 feet, then you get into high rise construction. So, it, quite honestly, for that extra five feet, is probably not worth their, their bother. The, the other thing is, I have to, what Chuck said, I just need a little more clarification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because my house is very close. To the lot line mm -hmm. to my neighbor's house. Now, back in 2002, I lifted the house up and I had to get a variance because it's so close to the lot line. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they allowed it. Yep. As long as it stayed on the same foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so if the if my house burned down and the foundation's still there, but it's it's more it's closer than four feet to the lot line, mm -hmm. I could rebuild. Yes. Or no. You'll have to go and get another variance. A variance. Okay. A variance. But it would be in within that first year. No, you can get a variance at any time. If the use is what needs to be adhered to within the first year, okay. you know, without getting a variance. So if you had a residential house, then it would be a residential house. Right. If, if because you're in the BSO, if you had three units mm -hmm. on your property mm -hmm. and only two were allowed, mm -hmm. within that first year, you, you have the right to maintain the use. You'd have to but then you'd have the to variance um, for the setbacks. And different for the setbacks, correct. But then you'd also would have to adhere all the current building codes, which is something that a lot of people may or may not want to do. Which could mean putting residential sprinklers in. Yeah. Which could mean, mm -hmm. you know, it could mean a lot of things lot that of they things don't necessarily want to do. Right. But those are the things that I know that in, with my property, for instance, mm -hmm. um, the choice was add a, add a third floor, I'll lift the house, and the builder said if. I take that, you know, if I do that, take the roof off and do this particular thing, it's going to be more than 50%, and you're going to have to do every, everything. Everything. Right. Code. You'd have to get the entire building up to code. Exactly. Electrical, right. everything would have uh, to be redone. Electric, if you had a door that wasn't the right width, mm -hmm. if you had stairs that weren't the right, mm -hmm. exactly. like, uh, rise and run, you'd have to do everything. Yeah. You know, so that's that's what triggers mm -hmm. all of those things. So if your house were to burn down and you had a set of stairs that were on the street, well, you're going to have to push them back. Yeah, well, but so, yeah. one of the things with foundations, um, because that actually is um, tricky, if you're in the flood zone and you want to lift your house, you're allowed to go up, I think it's four courses of cinder block before having to get a... Um, a variance. Oh, that's interesting. That yeah, that's because cool. obviously they want all the properties to be mm -hmm. up above the 100 feet, foot flood elevation. Thank you. Yeah, and so that yeah, actually is, well. and that probably, I don't remember when it was put into the zoning ordinance, mm -hmm. but it was many, many years ago. And But if you then lift the property, well, now the set of stairs that you had, you're allowed to make sure that the stairs get to the ground, <laughs> even if that means they go out another I'll foot. I'll be up at Home Depot this weekend buying block. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to you have to prove that you're below the flood can. elevation. I, I know. I'm yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> but that, and the other thing too is that in you we found have an inspection now. What's that? <laughs> You'll have an inspection <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, they're they're yeah they'll be coming tomorrow. <laughs> what a lot of people had tried in the past, which can't be allowed now regarding foundations is if you were to put a foundation mm -hmm. on a property and then two years later you go in and you say, yeah, I want to I want to build a new house, but I have a brand new foundation. That's not allowed. You know, because the simple reason is is that people were skirting their <laughs> the zoning 
by saying, oh, geez, I put $40,000 into a foundation. You're not going to make me tear that down, are you? And But right now there's a disclaimer on a foundation permit that says if you come in front of us for a zoning um, a variance, be aware. We may make you tear down your foundation and move your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that that, that happened recently with, uh, with Peter Ross. He actually didn't have to move the foundation, but that was that was actually an equitable waiver that he had. So um, there was a little problem with the street. The street made a curve, mm -hmm. and they went point to point, not realizing that the, there was a curvature to the lot. And so he built a little too close to the property line. It was nobody's fault, and it was just a, it, it was just was a um, an error, and it was an embarrassing error considering that he's a builder in town. <laughs> you know, you bring up any names. Yeah, you know. but you you would expect that uh, that could happen to a, a regular property owner all the time. So a lot of times, you know, what they'll be requiring for you is um, elevation certificates. You would need to get surveys. Then you would have to. There's a lot of things that become very daunting for the average property owner, which is just part of the the job of a builder. So, um, you know. Do you, do you see uh, zoning changes addressing sea level rise issues coming over the horizon? I don't know enough about that topic in order to, to give an educated opinion on that. Okay. I actually one that you might be able to. Do. What is the most likely reason for the zoning board to deny an application for a variance? Is there uh, a patent that comes before it you? Doesn't meet the five criteria. Yeah. No. But, but is it the competency of the presentation? It, it, it has a lot to do with that. No. You know, um, I we have had some applications that, quite honestly, if they were presented differently, they would have been approved. Um, you know, so it goes on a lot of different criteria. You know, we can only adjudicate on what is presented to us. You know, but there's also been some times where I think things have slipped through that probably should not have if we had all the information up front. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, so if I can manage to build a shed for less than $500, I don't need a building permit? No, will you be encroaching on the... Um, on your setbacks, so, uh, would, I mean, within your setbacks, I don't know where you could build a shed for less than five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. Um, but yeah, I know. I. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you, uh, your house on Ocean Boulevard. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, if it, it's within the setbacks, but you it's know. within the setbacks, you don't need, and you're having, you're not actually building it, or are you ordering. It? <laughs> No, if, it, if it's not movable, if it's on a foundation or if it's on blocks and it is a, a permanent structure, you, knew, you do need a building permit. Oh, okay. And so, but yeah, a shed would be certainly more than $500. A set of, you know, treads, uh, you know, replacing on some stairs, those could be less than $500. Okay, so You're replacing a board. Yeah, and again, I we'd have to verify that with the building department. You know, I, I know enough about the zoning board, but I just know enough about the building department to be dangerous. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll hit <laughs> the spot. Why is there a problem, or why is, I guess, what's the reason why the planning board and zoning board won't address the impact fee? Well, that's a planning board that's issue. Not the zoning yeah, board. zoning board has nothing to do with impact fees. We don't we don't um, put them into place. Um, we don't um, charge them. We can't give relief for them. That definitely would be a planning board issue. You know, but different towns, Seabrook, one of being one of them, has different ways of charging impact fees. You know, um, and that's why the development in Seabrook is a little bit different than the development in Hampton. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you said between Ocean and Ashford, um, on the Leonard Street, that's all BS? That's all the business seasonal zone, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you can see a a, a business pop up in, on one of the Leonard Streets. That was one on a one yeah. question. Yeah, we've, in the past we've seen many restaurants. I think we only have one full-service restaurant on the Leonard Streets, but when I was a kid there were plenty. Yeah. Um, you see, hot dog stands on some. Hot, yeah, <laughs> the, the sub shops. There are um, laundromats. 
Yeah, um, this was an antique yeah. store that just popped up. Right, and I, I don't know anything about that. If you have a question about that, you can certainly call the, the building department. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, give us a sense of what development is likely to be coming before you in the next few months. Development? Yeah, it just um, seems there's a lot going on. There are. Right now we have three that are presently under construction. We have 128 Ashworth, which is was demolished in the last couple of weeks, which was the summer wind. I missed uh, the bob wire. <laughs> the bob wire, I think, is still there. <laughs> I like it right now. I can look out my window and see this empty lot. I nice. probably should have bought it myself. <laughs> but the, um, but so that's 32 units, and those um, one bedroom, three bedroom units. Then we have N Street, which is going to be 20 units, and those are all two bedroom units. Uh, all garden style, and then we have Ocean Boulevard, 33 Ocean Boulevard, which is 12 units that are going to be two bedroom townhouses, six townhouses on the first two levels, six townhouses on the, the third and fourth level. We have one more development that is in turnaround right now at the zoning board level. They've decided to change the plan, so they have to come back in front of the zoning board, which is 377 Ocean Boulevard. Have another, another story or something, isn't it? Is they're Warren, trying to, Warren, they're, Kelly? Warren Kelly's, and they're trying to go up another story. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some issues with the topography of that land. It goes downhill and downhill quick, and so um, in order to to make it, you know, viable land, they have to do a lot more infrastructure than they were originally anticipating. Okay, good. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Oh, I'll go back to work. See you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. Can you open? Tommy. Yeah, since you get the house guy. Yeah. So, um, I noticed Doc is here. I don't know if you wanted to give us any schedules of when, when the offices are open or anything well, like that. Well, I, I, I plan on coming in next month, give a photo run down on the Children's Festival. And so, with our office, will be full time open on the 17th of uh, June. We are open weekends, as you know, right. uh, up to that point. So the 17th of June, which is coming quick. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Most certainly is. And, when, as you, and I'm sure you're all aware, <clears throat> excuse me, seven, seven days, nine to nine. Nine to nine. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. Um, old business. Maureen, do you have any old business? Um, I just wanted to mention that last Tuesday, the high school band and it's not the chorus. What's it called? That's chamber singers. the chamber singers. Thank you. Came to the um, the um, seashell. The seashell, and they were terrific. They Marie, were really wonderful. Marie. Yes. They were, they were rained out. They actually were there. This yeah, they were supposed to be there the second, and then they were rained out. The rain date was the ninth, and they yeah. came and they mm -hmm. were wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed them, and there was a good follow. There was a good group of people there too. Um, Every night. No, not yet. Yes, doesn't it start after the St. Castles and the St. Castles? Wednesday? It starts Friday. Yeah, very well, Pete. We have fireworks next week. A week from Saturday, not this Saturday. Exactly. The sand drop is on the 12th, and then they start competing. Then we have the fireworks that Wednesday, and we'll have fireworks also on the 20th. 20th is a We have Friday. fireworks. Am I surprised? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know this. We know this. Is it is Saturday the 21st or the 20th? The 20th. The 20th, I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we have one the week before? The week of. Oh, the week of. Okay. Wednesday. The Wednesday. All right. I well, thought you said we were having it. Your eyes are going. I'm going on with you. Guys. I thought you were saying we were having it two Saturdays yeah. in a row, and I don't have that anywhere. Or <laughs> we did not budget that. So, all right, good. All right, just make sure. Just an FYI, the calendars are being trimmed tonight. We hopefully will have them tomorrow afternoon. Uh, definitely by Friday, they are going to be one out to the. Hotels, the motels, the stores. Okay. Uh, Doc's going to get a, a, a slew of them all, so so what the, you know, people come in. And those are the, the two by threes that everyone likes. Yeah. We've already printed up uh, approximately, and like Doc's given them out. I'm going to say about 2,800 or so of the uh, just the calendars. It's three page, 
people come in, what's the music, what's the music? And, uh, we, and um, Glenn was still working on it, the calendar takes a while. So we, we printed these up, so for the last two weekends, people were able to see uh, you know, what's going to be happening through the summer. But the big calendar will show the Children's Festival and all the different activities. That, that is the number one question from the tourists and the halls and so forth. It's the bands by far the number one question. Great. We voted in May to support the attempt by the uh, Conservation Commission and the planner to get a grant concerning community rating, and it does appear progress has been made. The Area Commission has voted to support the money component of the grant, and the town voted to support the money components. All the money has been voted on and approved by the various bodies, so hopefully that will get in gear. Uh, of note is apparently Hampton has more flood insurance policies than any other community in the state of New Hampshire. It's like 1,750 of them, and about a million and a half dollars of premium, and each step improvement in the community rating system is a 5% discount on those policies. So should, we should all encourage the continuation of that. On a less positive note, FEMA has started to implement surcharging on all flood insurance policies. And this is not the base premium of the policy, it's a cost in addition to the policy premium. And if it's your primary residence, it's nominal, it's $25. If it's not your prim primary residence, it can be $250. So when, and this is done as your policy renews, so kind of watch the bill you get when the policy is being renewed. Uh, I got one and they mentioned the surcharge, which is, I'm fighting because it's the wrong class, but it, the font for the surcharge seemed to be in different type and you could easily miss it, although it's on the billing statement. So other than that, things are smooth. And I'm messing with the wrong person, is that what you're telling all right, I am glad to announce the flagpole for the parking lot on Ashworth has been ordered. Um, we went with a little sturdier flagpole. We didn't have to light the flagpole because there's a light right above where we're going. So uh, we figured it was better off uh, putting a better pole in. So that, that, that's coming. Uh, tomorrow, there is a public meeting uh, with the Hampton Beach Area Commission to discuss transportation improvements. Um, it's going to be at the um, at the Selectman's meeting room tomorrow at 6. It's very important, I think, if everybody anybody can go. And I'm going to try my hardest if I, to get coverage. I don't know if I can, I'm going to be able to go. I don't know if the other commissioners will make time to go, but as many people uh, can go and discuss and ask questions. Um, we have um, a gentleman named William Rose, who the Hampton Beach Area Commission has hired, who who's working with uh, DOT, and um, they get a lot a lot of things going on. So I, I think it's kind of it's very important. So if you can go to that, that would be great. Do you have any idea what they're going to be discussing specifically, or? I got the little note here. Do you want to read it? You can. <laughs> uh, let's see it. It's just discussion about the future of the great resource we have on the ocean. Talk about what will work best for all parties regarding transportation in the beach area. The project is intended to identify common sense solutions and enjoy strong community support. The planner, William Rose, once these options are identified, the next phase will be to advance those supported transportation improvements as far through engineering design that the funds that they, they've gotten grants from the government, so those funds will be put to use. So. Are they just talking about Ocean Boulevard? They said can be talked about town streets. No, this is for Hampton Beach. Right. Ocean Boulevard? No. All of the beach. All of the beach. Including the bridge. Yeah. Yes. Are they going to discuss? Um, I've been to a few of these and put this well as yourself. Is that going to be part of the thing that they're talking about? Maybe a parking garage off the beach? It's, 
it's a little of everything. They want to come up with the best solutions. I think one of the biggest issues, and, and one of the reasons, and that was new business to, as well as old business. We closed today on the on the um, yeah. cruise parking. Yeah. We are. So now we now we're going through. We have to have some tests done on the property for um, to make sure there's not there isn't asbestos or any hazardous material. Uh, and then hopefully we can move ahead. Hopefully by the end of June the buildings will be gone and we can have everything working smoothly for the summer. I have gotten numerous phone calls for people looking for parking, and we will have pricing and everything very shortly. So. Uh, call myself or call Mike O'Neill and uh, or come down to the parking lot here and ask for Mike or Carol. They'll have, Are gonna have somebody in the lot this weekend? But it's on Sunday. I think on Sunday we're going to try to have something going, so we'll see. Yeah. Any opportunity that we can fill a parking lot, we will. <laughs> Bring our taxes down. Pay for it. All right? So, uh, any new business, Bob? The Boston Globe last week ran an article saying that Congress is considering reversing the Bigot Waters Bill, which is the 2012 edition, which uh, increases the flood insurance premium so dramatically. And it appears it's lining up as a contest between the West Coast, the Gulf, the East Coast versus the rest of the country. It's not a Democrat-Republican thing. It's more like, does your state have waterfront? So I would say, if anyone who gets a chance, right, you're right the senators and congressmen encouraging them to take another look at this. This is a terribly expensive burden on many, many people if they don't. Maureen, any new business? Yes, I'd like to take this opportunity because I know how much you went through to thank Chairman Rage for all of the work he put in in closing this deal <laughs> and getting it done, and, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. I, I also want to talk about um, they still need volunteers. And I know a lot of people here have volunteered for the, the sand sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, there's time, and, and do you have the, the information? Well, it would be uh, the times would be after the event, which is on the 20th, after the, the actual awards given out. The 21st to uh, is it July 5th? When is this? Yeah, July 5th. Uh, anytime in there, there is a tremendous need for volunteers. Um, on all of the shifts, and it goes from um, there's five shifts a day, uh, six to nine, a.m. nine to twelve, twelve to three, three to six, and six to nine. And uh, they need they need it on all shifts. So please, if you could at, at all give any time, we'd appreciate it. And there's a lot of students in various schools that uh, need to get hours in. So if we can get some of those kids, to, they, they'd be great for them. Or Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Um, you know, as long as they're older, I'm working with it. I don't know. I think they need to be eagles. Yeah, the, yeah, so that would be good. Yeah. All right, and that's it for new business. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I've been a little... I would uh, bring up... You had mentioned at the Area Commission that we, we may need to revote on our contribution to the grant money because it was originally the town was going to pay half. Right. And we were going to pay half, but now the HBAC is going to... Right. Put in pot. Uh, no. So based on that, I would move that we uh, reapprove the prior motion and amend it in the following way, that the village district will pay $1,250, and the town and the Hanton Area Beach Area Commission will... Co uh, collectively match those funds. Second. I'm not sure I understand what you just said. Are we doing a third, a third, a third? No, we do. We we already said that we would do fifty percent. Fifty percent. Yeah. And then. Just repeat the motion. Do you think I can remember? <laughs> <laughs> Give it a best shot. Ed. I would move that the village district appropriate twelve hundred and fifty dollars toward the twenty five hundred dollars in cash grant uh, money to get the $20,000 grant from the Rockingham, with the Rockingham Planning Commission to do community ra rating matters. In, and this money would be available 
provided the town and the Hampton Beach Area Commission together match our offer. Want me to do it again? I refuse. No, I got, no, I, I got it this time. I just, uh, I just find it interesting that we're paying half, and the other two entities are paying half a piece. I just find that interesting. Quarter. Uh huh. Quarter. Well, oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you for the math. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. All right. All in favor? Bang. Done. All right. There was one other thing. Sorry. I'm sorry. November meeting. I'm doing this now so we can let, let them know for the calendar. Uh, our meeting is on Veterans Day, so I would like to make a motion to change it to the third week in November as opposed to the second week, um, just in respect of Veterans Day. So that would be the 18th of November? The 18th of November. I'd second it. All in favor? It's Veterans Day on the, on the, the Wednesday. Oh, so we don't need no veterans. Day. We did one year, and I and I and I and I heard about it's it. A lot of parades. I think it's probably a, you know, out of respect. It's disrespectful to the following week. Yeah. Because we're already the third Wednesday of the month. No, the second. We're the second. Okay. So we're going to go to the third. All right, and I don't know if that's going to affect twenty-two. Is is you have enough time to worry about it, right? Basically, what comes down to. Okay. I'm sure is uh, at that time of year there's probably 17 budget committee meetings that week. Yeah. 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 All right, so that will let them know the 18th. All right, great. And, and again, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to forget Channel 22. They're fantastic. Thank you for all you guys do for us. Really appreciate that. All right, so let's approve the minutes from May's meeting, May 13th, 2015, page one. Page two, page three, and page four. Do I have a motion to accept the meetings from May 13, 2015? I move to accept them as written. Second. second. All in favor? All right, now public comment. I just want to make oh. one comment about the sandcastles. The number, let me repeat that number for Kim Barone. Uh, 918. Six six five two. And I would second Maureen's comments, uh, <laughs> congratulating Chuck for all the work he did. He's the one who made this parking lot possible. I've heard other people. I think the clues made it possible. Well. <laughs> and the clues, of course. Uh, contrary to what you've heard in the community. His initial CR do not mean community rating. They mean <laughs> commissioner of parking. <laughs> um, Brian Lapham, 27 I Street. I just wanted to follow up about what Maureen had to say. Um, they really need some volunteers. And if you want to have an experience of a lifetime, because you'll see people from all over the world, and it's only three-hour shifts, but we really need people for the later part of the event. So the number again is 918-6652. That's Kim Baroni. <coughs> Please give her a call. Thank you. Hi, I'm going to stop putting you on the agenda. You should. I will. Just um, remind me. I'll do it. Um, Kathy Silver from the Blue Ocean uh, Discovery Center. Uh, we also are opening shortly. Okay, we'll be opening June 20th for the summer. And for that first week, we're going to be open 10 to 3. And then on the 27th, then we start our summer schedule, which this year will be weekends 10 to 7, and during the week 12 to 7. 
we've changed the hours because we have school groups that are now coming to us in the morning, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's working. I'd also like to mention that on June 27th, on the seashell stage at 3 o'clock, uh, the Aquarian Water Company is having their big environmental champion awards, and there will be a beach cleanup to follow that, which we're um, doing with them. So this is a big deal. I just, uh, what occurs to me is, uh, did we clear that with the people who are going to be on the stage? Oh, yeah. Because they set up around 4 o'clock, 4.30, so I just, I think yep. just to it's, clarify. It's a fairly quick deal. Okay. And Glenn's all with it. That's He fine. talked to me last that's, month that's about it. Matters. Okay. And like the Sandcastle, it's, we too are looking for volunteers, as always. Although I will say this, the community has really come through. I mean, our, our times are filling right up, which is wonderful. Um, I'm, so I'm always looking for volunteers. Uh, I'm looking for sponsors for a scavenger hunt or beach cleanups, like if you'd like to buy um, stainless steel water bottles or bags or something, put your logo on it. We'll gladly give them out, um, that sort of thing. So it's advertising for you. And I'm also looking for, we're looking for donations. We need sidewalk chalk. I, I, oh, go I have some for you. Oh, thank you. I go through a lot of it, okay? And um, reusable bags for our cleanups because we've really trying to, we're very much trying to get away from plastic. So, and um, garden gloves. We don't use um, plastic uh, vinyl gloves anymore either. So we don't use plastic bags. We don't use gloves. So we're all reusable now. Okay, and, but... You know, if you got a lot of those reusable bags and you say, oh, I could part with a couple, we would gladly take them. <clears throat> Any suggestions for the disgusting mess of the 4th of July? I, I've never seen anything like it. I just The it's, only it's thing just I can... Just it's, ju it's just more education. Signage. I and, beyond education. I, I, it's, it's hard. It's, just, it's really hard. I don't know. I just think there's got to be something. It's hard not to be frustrated. Water guns or something. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to keep going out there every day and cleaning that beach. I know. Absolutely. It's very really, hard. Really, it's just... Yeah. Maybe it's some more signage that, you know, keep the beach clean. And these people are just lazy slobs. The question is why they don't put barrels on the sand, and I know it, we run into this a lot. Basically, and I, I think I've got this right, this is a, a state decision that... They removed the barrels because in all the state parks, the barrels were causing problems with hornets, bees, that sort of thing. So like in Pawtuckaway, the bees come in and the hornets, and then everybody gets upset. So that's that part of it. But on the beaches, the seagulls get into the trash, and then they spread it. And then who wants to sit next to a barrel? I mean, our sand on a good sunny day is pretty limited to begin with and if you take up a, an area with a barrel then they have to go empty them so that's why it's carry in carry out on all the state beach all the state parks i think there was a lot of them being tipped over oh yeah i remember it's it was a lot about 20 years ago easily we, yeah, yeah we used to have the old steel ones we did and they'd light fires in them and oh, flying yeah. rats were the worst yeah they just yeah. go right yeah. in and rip everything out and make it <laughs> now we have the nice covered ones. We've yeah. got the ones with the Hampton Art Network pictures on them, and we've got the recycle bins. I mean, it's there. They're it's just there. Lazy people. They are. Slops. Some. I hate not all. All these. Oh, I know. It's no. tough. So just you know. If we ban people from the beach, we can sell them. There you them go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> All right. Anybody else for public comment? No? Seeing none, closing comments. Maureen. No, I'm also, thank you. This is the first meeting in I don't know how long we haven't mentioned the coloring book. No need, said. it's completed right, and it's wanted. beautiful. <laughs> I had to oh. throw it out there. <laughs> how many would you like? Ten. 
the heck? What are you doing with them? Open a shop down there? Like, I got 22 people, my, 22 of my relatives staying with me right okay. now. Um, uh, is that why you're here? No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's why right. she's here. She's that. hiding from them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he's not here. That's where I can get them for you. Anyone, don't get your hands. 33 and 35 don't. Okay. Good. Uh, but I'll have a chance to. Oh, now we got to. Whatever we decided not to do plastic bags with the coloring books. Remember that? Yeah. Was last yes, no, I. Um, I uh, that's a Glenn thing. He's not here, but I understand your point. Okay. Hi, John Kane. Uh, Mark, I don't know, but that's okay. Okay. I just want to remind everyone, we have a phenomenal weekend coming up, and that is going to be the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Not only do we have, you know, master sculptors that are going to be coming in here and competing, the same weekend we've got the catamaran races mm -hmm. on that weekend. We've got uh, a major... That means it's going to rain. We've got a major volleyball tournament with 120 participants already signed up. We're going to have the Continentals that night. We've got the awards going on that night. And we've got fireworks that we'll all be watching from uh, Chuck's new um, rooftop deck. So it's going to, we've, we've got probably one of the busiest weekends coming up in the entire state for, for a town like us with all these things going on. So uh, enjoy it. And it's, everything's for free. Right. Did you have anything? No. All right. On that note, we're going to call this meeting. 625. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.